Today's organizations are overwhelmed by the number of different assets connected to their networks, which now include not only IT devices and assets, but also a lot of unmanaged assets like cloud, IoT, building management systems, industrial control systems, medical devices, and more. That's not just it, there's more. We're seeing massive volume of threats and surge of severe vulnerabilities that put these assets at risk. This is happening every day, and many, including me, think it's only going to get worse. The scale of the problem will accelerate. Security and IT teams are struggling to manage all these vulnerabilities at scale. With the time it takes to exploit a new vulnerability, combined with the lack of visibility into the asset attack surface area, companies are having a hard time addressing the vulnerabilities as quickly as they need. This is today's special Q program where we're going to talk about these problems and how they're solved. Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is a special program called Managing Risk Across Your Extended Attack Surface Area with Armis, new asset intelligence platform. To start things off, let's bring in the co-founder and CTO of Armis, Nadir Israel. Nadir, great to have you on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great success with Armis. I want to just roll back and just zoom out and look at what's the big picture? What are you guys focused on? What's the holy grail? What's the secret sauce? So um, Armis's mission, if you will, is to solve, to your point, uh, literally one of the holy grails of security teams for the past decade or so, which is what if you could actually have a complete, unified, authoritative asset inventory of everything? And stressing that word, everything, IT, OT, IoT, everything on kind of the physical space of things, data centers, virtualization, uh, applications, cloud, what if you could have everything mapped out for you so that you can actually operate uh, your organization on top of essentially a map? Uh, I like to equate this in a way to organizations and security teams everywhere seem to be running, uh, basically running the battlefield, if you will, of their organization without an actual map of what's going on with charts and graphs. So we're here to provide that map, every aspect of the environment and be able to build on top of that business processes, products, and features that would assist security teams in managing that battlefield. So this category basically is the cyber asset attack surface management kind of focus, but it really is defined by this extended asset attack surface area. What is that? Can you explain that? Yeah, it's it's a mouthful. I think the uh, the chasm uh, for short and uh, Gartner do love their, uh, uh, like their acronyms there, but uh, Chasm in short is a way to describe a bit of what I mentioned before or a slice out of it. It's the whole part around a unified view of the attack surface where I think where we see things and kind of where Armis extends that is really with the extended attack surface. Uh, that basically means that idea of what if you could have it all? What if you could have both a unified view of your environment, but also of every single thing that you have with uh, a, a strong emphasis on the completeness of that picture? Uh, if I take the map analogy slightly uh, more to the extreme, a map of some of your environment isn't nearly as useful as a map of everything. Uh, if you had to, in your own kind of map application, uh, you know, chart a path from uh, New York to uh, whichever your favorite surrounding city, but it only takes you so far and then you sort of need to do the rest of it on your own, not nearly as effective. And in security terms, I think it really boils down into you can't secure what you can't see. And so from an Armist perspective, it's about seeing everything in order to protect everything. And not only do we uh, discover every connected asset that you have, we provide a risk rating to every single one of them. We provide a criticality rating and the ability to take action on top of these things. Having a map is uh, huge. Everyone wants to know what's on there in their inventory, right? For, from, a, from a risk management standpoint, also from a vulnerability perspective. So I totally see that and it's, I can see that being the holy grail. But, but on the vulnerability side, you, you, you got to see everything and you guys have new stuff around vulnerability management. What's this all about? What kind of gaps are you seeing that you're filling in the vulnerability side of it? Because, okay, I can see everything. Now I got to watch out for uh, threat vectors. Yeah, and um, I'd say a different way of asking this is, uh, okay, vulnerability management has been around for a while. Um, wh what the hell are you uh, bringing into the mix uh, that's so uh, new and novel and great? Um, so I would say that, uh, you know, vulnerability scanners of different sorts have existed for over a decade. Um, and uh, 
I think that ultimately what Armis brings into the mix today is how do we fill in the gaps in a world where critical infrastructure is in danger of being attacked by nation states these days, where ransomware is an everyday occurrence, and where I think credible, up to the minute, and contextualized vulnerability and risk information is essential. Scanners, or how we've been doing things for the last decade, just aren't enough. I think the three things that Ormus excels at and completes the security stack today in the vulnerability management side are scale, reach, and context. Scale meaning um, ultimately, and I think this is of no news to any enterprise, environments are huge. They are beyond huge. Uh, when most of the solutions that enterprises use today were built, uh, they were built for thousands or tens of thousands of assets. These days we measure enterprises in the billions, billions of different assets especially if you include how applications are structured, uh, containers, cloud, all of that, billions and billions of different assets. And I think that ultimately, uh, when the latest and greatest and catastrophic new vulnerabilities come out, and sadly, that's a monthly occurrence these days, yeah. you can't just now wait around for things to kind of scan through the environment and figure out what's going on there. Real-time images of vulnerabilities, real-time understanding of what the risk is across that entire massive footprint is essential to be able to do things. And if you don't, then um, lots and lots of teams of people are tasked with doing this uh, day in, day out uh, in order to accomplish the task. The second, the second thing I think is the reach. Um, scanners can't go everywhere. Uh, they don't really uh, deal well with environments that are mixed uh, IT, OT, for instance, like some of our um, clients deal with. Uh, they can't really deal with areas that aren't classic IT. And in general, uh, these days, over 70% of assets are, in fact, of the unmanaged variety, if you will. So combining different approaches from an Ormus standpoint of both passive and active, we reach a tremendous uh, uh, scale, I think, within the environment and ability to provide a reach that is complete. What if you could have vulnerability management cover 100% of your environment and uh, in a very effective manner, uh, and in and, and a very scalable manner. And the last thing really is context. And that's uh, a big deal here. I think that most vulnerability management programs hinge on asset context, on the ability to understand what are the assets I'm dealing with? And more importantly, what is the criticality of these assets so I can better prioritize and manage the entire process along the way? So with these things in mind, that's what Armis basically pulled out as a vulnerability management process. What if we could collect all the vulnerability information from your entire environment and give you a map of that on top of that map of assets. Co connect every single vulnerability and finding to the relevant assets and give you a real way to manage that automatically and in a way that uh, uh, prevents teams of people from having to do a lot of grunt work in the process. Yeah, it's like building a search engine almost. You got the behavioral and contextual. You got to understand what's going on in the environment and then you got to have the context to what it means relative to the environment. And this is the criticality piece you mentioned. This is a huge differentiator in my mind. I want to unpack that. Understanding what's going on and then what to pay attention to. It's a data problem. So you got, you got that kind of search and cataloging of the assets and then you got the contextualization of it. But then what alarms do I pay attention to? What is the vulnerability? This is the context. This is a huge deal because your businesses your operation is going to have some important pieces, but also it changes in, in, on agility. So how do you guys do that? That's, I think, a key piece. Yeah, um, that's a really good question. So um, asset criticality um, is a key piece in being able to prioritize the operation. Uh, the reason is really simple. And I'll take uh, an example we're all very, very familiar with, and it's been beaten to death, but it's still a good example, which is log4j or log4shell. Uh, when that came out, um, hundreds of people in large organizations started mapping the entire environment on which applications have what aspect of log4j. Now, uh, one of the key things there is that when you're doing that exercise for the first time, there are literally millions of systems in a typical enterprise that have log4j in them. But asset criticality and the application and business context are key here because some of these uh, uh, different assets that have log4j are part of your critical business function and your critical business applications, and they deserve immediate attention. Some of them are some Git server of some developer somewhere and don't warrant quite the same attention or criticality as others. Armis helps by providing the underlying asset map as a built-in aspect of the process. It maps the relationships and dependencies for you. It pulls together 
and clusters together what applications do each asset does each asset serve. So I might be looking at a server and saying, okay, this server, um, you know, it, it supports my ERP system. Uh, it supports my uh, production uh, applications to be able to serve my customers. Uh, it serves maybe my .com website. Uh, understanding what applications each asset serves and every dependency along the way, meaning that endpoint, that server, but also the load balancers that support it and the firewalls and every aspect along the way, that's the bread and butter of the relationship mapping that Armis puts into place to be able to do that. And we also allow users to tweak, add information, uh, connect us with their CMDB or anywhere else where they put this in. But once the information is in, uh, that can serve vulnerability management. It can serve other security functions as well. But in the context of vulnerability management, it creates a much more streamlined process for being able to do the basics. Some critical applications, uh, I want to know exactly what all the critical vulnerabilities uh, that apply to them are. Some business applications, I just want to be able to put SLAs on that this must be solved within a week, this must be solved within a month, and be able to actually automatically track all of these in a world that is very, very complex inside of an operation of an enterprise. We're going to hear from some of your customers later, but I want to get your thoughts on anecdotally. What do you hear from, you're the CTO co-founder, you're actually going into the big accounts, when you roll this out, what are they saying to you? What's some of the, what are some of the comments? Oh my God, this is amazing, <laughs> thank you so much. What uh, well, are, are share some uh, the, the comments. Well, first of all, of course, that's what they're saying. Uh, they're saying we're great, uh, of course, always. But uh, you no, know, more specifically, I think, uh, this solves a huge gap for them. They are used to tools coming in and discovering vulnerabilities for them, but really close to nothing being able to streamline the truly complex and scalable process of being able to manage vulnerabilities within the environment. Not only that, uh, the integration-led um, uh, design or led deployment and the fact that we are a completely agentless SaaS platform are extremely important for them. Uh, these are uh, these are times where if something isn't easily deployable for an enterprise, its value is next to nothing. I think that uh, enterprises have come to realize that if something isn't a one-click uh, you know, deployment across the environment, uh, it's almost not worth the effort these days because environments are so complex that you, you can't fully realize the value any other way. So from an Armist standpoint, the fact that we can deploy with a few clicks, the fact that we immediately provide that value, the fact that we're agentless in the sense that we don't need to go around installing a footprint within the environment, and for clients who already have Armist, the fact that it's a flip of a switch, just turn it on, uh, are extreme. I think that the fact in particular uh, that Armis can be deployed, the vulnerability management can be deployed on top of the existing vulnerability scanner with a simple one-click integration is huge for them. and. I think all of these together are what contribute to them saying how great this is, but yeah. That's, the, the, that's agent, what the agent list thing is huge. What, what's the alternative? What's their, what does it look like if they're going to go the other route? Slow to deploy, have meetings, launch it in the environment. What's it look like? I, I think anything the day, these days that touches an endpoint with an agent goes through a huge round of approvals before anything goes into an environment. Same goes, by the way, for additional scanners. No one wants to hear about additional scanners. They've already gone through the effort with some of the biggest tools out there to punch holes through firewalls, to install scanners in different ways. They don't want yet another scanner or yet another agent. Armis rides on top of the existing infrastructure, the existing agents, the existing scanners. You don't need to do a thing. It just deploys on top of it. And that's really what makes this so easy and seamless. Talk about Armist Research. Can you talk about what's that about? What's going on there? What are you guys doing? How do you guys stay relevant uh, for your customers? For sure. Um, so one of the, I, I've made a lot of bold claims throughout, I think uh, the entire, uh, you know, the, the entire Q&A here, but one of the biggest uh, 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 magic components, if you will, to Armist that kind of help explain what all these magic components are, are really something that we call um, our collective asset knowledge base. Uh, and it's, uh, it's really the source of our power. Think of it as a giant uh, collective intelligence that keeps learning from all of the different environments combined that Armis has deployed at. Essentially, if we see something in one environment, we can translate it immediately into all environments. So anyone who joins uh, this uh, or uses the product joins this collective intelligence in essence. What does that mean? It means that 
Armist learns about vulnerabilities from other environments. A new log for J comes out, for instance, it's enough that in some environments, Armist is able to see it from scanners or from agents or from S-bombs or anything that basically provides information about uh, log for J. And Armist immediately infers or creates enrichment rules that act across the entire, uh, the entire tenant base or the entire client base of Armist. So very quick response to industry events. Uh, whenever something comes out, again, the results are immediate, uh, very up to the minute. Uh, very up to the hour. But also I'd say that Armis does its own proactive asset research. Uh, we have a huge data set at our disposal, a lot of uh, willing uh, and able clients and also a lot of partners within the industry that Armis leverages. But our own research is into uh, interesting aspects within the environment. We do our own proactive research into things like TL Storm, uh, which is uh, kind of a, a bit of a bridging research and vulnerabilities between uh, cyber physical aspects. So on the one hand, the cyber space and kind of virtual environments, but on the other hand, the actual physical space, vulnerabilities and things like UPSs or industrial equipment or things like that. But I will say that also Armist targets its research along uh, different paths that we feel are underserved. Uh, we started a few years back research into firmwares, uh, different types of real-time operating systems. We came out with things like Urgent 11, which was research into, um, on the one hand, operating systems that run on 2 billion different devices worldwide. On the other hand, in the 40 years that existed, only 13 vulnerabilities were ever exposed or revealed uh, about that operating system. Either it's the most secure operating system in the world, or it's just not gone through enough rigor and enough research in doing this. The type of active research we do is to complement a lot of the research going on in the industry, serve our clients better, but also provide kind of inroads, I think, for the industry to be better at what they do. Awesome, Nadir, thanks for sharing the insights. Great to see the research. You got to be at the cutting edge. You got to investigate, be ready for a moment's notice on, on all aspects of the operating environment, uh, down to the hardware, down to the packet level, down to the, any vulnerability, I'll be ready for it. Great job. Thanks for, for sharing, appreciate it. Absolutely. In a moment, Tim Everson is going to join us. He's the CISO of Kalahari Resorts and Conventions. He'll be joining me next. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Part of the shift in how attackers think of networks and enterprises is basically where do I get my money from? And there is a seismic shift that came from attackers no longer going after data as much as after the operations of a business. So ransomware is not only on the rise, it's on an exponential curve of a rise. And connected devices play a part uh, in multiple ways. In an average environment that we are going to, 80 to 90% of the devices there are unmanaged. And uh, basically this is just growing and growing and creating a huge gap around visibility and control of those assets. And this is being leveraged by attackers more and more. When we started Armis, uh, it was a shock to us that enterprises just have no idea what they have on their network or in their environment. We've seen even situations where devices as innocent as a boardroom control tablet um, are sending out uh, large amounts of data which turned out to be video and audio from the boardroom uh, to some unknown internet location. Armis was basically built to be the best in the world in knowing devices, from the basics of understanding what a device is down to the exact make, model, OS, which is so crucial during an investigation and provides us a lot of data, a lot of data that allows us to learn patterns of what's good, what's bad, and how an attack would look like on a variety of different types of devices. It allows us to detect this fast and also to stop it in real time. One solution that can provide a complete uh, converged view of everything and a complete security for the entire environment is the only way to go. And that's really what Armis is building. Okay, welcome back to the portion of the program for customer lightning talks, where we chat with Armis' customers for a rapid fire five minute session on their CISO perspectives and insights into cybersecurity. First up is Tim Everson, CISO of Kalahari Resorts and Conventions. Let's get it going. Hi, Tim, welcome to theCUBE and Armist program, managing risk across your extended surface area. 
Thanks for having me, appreciate it. So let's go, let's get going. So unified visibility across the extended asset service is key. You can't secure what you can't see. Tell me about what you're able to centralize your views on network assets and what is Armas doing from an impact standpoint that's had on your business? Sure, so traditionally, basically, uh, you know, you have all your various, your various uh, management platforms, your Cisco platforms, your SIMs, your, your wireless platforms, all of the different pieces. And you've got all this disparate data out there and you've got to chase all of this data through all these different tools. Uh, Armis is fantastic and was really, you know, point blank drop in place for us as far as getting access to all of that data all in one place and giving us visibility into everything. Uh, basically open the doors, letting us see our customer wireless traffic, our internal traffic, our PCI traffic, because we deal with credit cards, HIPAA, compliance, all this traffic, all these different places, all into one. All right, next up, vulnerability management is a big topic across all assets, not just IT devices. The gaps are there uh, in the current vulnerability management programs. How has Armas vulnerability management made things better for your business? And what can you see now that you couldn't see before? So Armas gives me better visibility of the network side of these vulnerabilities. You know, you, you have your Nessus vulnerability scanners, the things that look at machines, look at configurations and, and hard facts. Nessus gives you all those. But when you turn to Armis, Armis looks at the network perspective, takes all that traffic that it's seeing on the network and gives you the network side of these vulnerabilities. So you can see if something's trying to talk out to a specific port or to a specific host on the internet. And Armis consolidates all that and gives you trusted sources of information to, to validate where those are coming from. You know, when you take into account all the criticality of the different kinds of assets involved in a business operation and they're becoming more wider, especially with edge and other, other areas, how has the security workload changed? The security workload has increased dramatically, uh, especially in hospitality. Um, in our case, we have, you know, not only do we have hotel rooms and, and visitors and our guests, we also have a convention center that we deal with. We have water parks and, and fun things for people to do, you know, families and, and businesses alike. And so when you add all those things up and you add the wireless and you add the network and, you know, the audio video and all these different pieces that come into play with all of those things in hospitality and you add our convention centers on top of it, uh, the footprints just expanded enormously in the past few years. You know, when you have a digital transformation in a use case like yours, it's very diverse. You need a robust network. You need a robust environment uh, to implement SaaS solutions. No ages to deploy, no updates needed. You got to be, gotta be in, in line with that to, to execute and scale. How easy was Armist to implement, ease of use, the simplicity of the plug and play? In other words, how quickly do you achieve this time to value? Oh goodness, we did a we did a proof of concept uh, about three months ago in one of our resort locations. We dropped in an Armist appliance, and literally within the first couple hours of the appliance being on the network, we had data on thirty to forty thousand devices that were touching our network. Uh, very quick and easy, very drop and plug and play. And moving from the you know the POC to production, same deal. We we dropped in these appliances in each site. Uh, now we're seeing over one hundred and eighty thousand devices touching our networks within a given week. Armas has this global asset knowledge base. It's crowdsourced and asset intelligent engine. It's a game changer. It tracks managed, unmanaged IoT devices. Um, were you shocked when you discovered how many assets they were able to discover, uh, and what impact did that have for you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, not only do we have the devices that you know that we have, but you know we have guests that bring things on site all the time. Roku TVs and players and Amazon Fire Sticks and all these different things that are touching our network, and seeing those in real time and seeing how much traffic they're using. You know, we can see utilization. We can see you know exactly what's being brought on. We can see vehicles in our parking lot that have access points turned on. I mean, it's just amazing how much data this opened our eyes to. That you know, you know it's there, but you don't ever see it is bring your own equipment to the resort so you can watch all your Netflix, HDMI cable, everyone's doing it now. I mean, this is the new user behavior, uh, great insight. Anything more you'd want to say about Armas for the folks watching? I would say the key is they're very easy to work with. Uh, the team at Armas has worked very closely with me to get the integrations that we've that we've put in place, you know, with, with our networking equipment, with our wireless, with, with different pieces of things. And they're working directly with me to help integrate some other things that we've asked them to do that aren't there already. Their team is very open, they listen, uh, they take everything that we have to say as a customer to heart and, and they really put a lot of effort into making it happen. All right, Tim, well, thanks for your time. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech coverage. Up next in this lightning talk session is Brian Gilligan, manager of security and operations at Brookfield Properties. Thanks for watching. Cleveland 
is about 40 miles northeast of the big city of Houston. So we're a suburban outlying area. When I first came to Cleveland in 2013, we had a total student population of 3,200 students. Currently, now in 2022, we sit at 11,200 students. We are one of five of the fastest growing districts in the entire state of Texas. Our biggest security challenge was we had to deal with an outdated infrastructure, right? And we were only concerned with devices that were internal. But because of the pandemic, we had to open up our network to devices in the community. So the biggest concern is that we have devices that are not managed by the district transversing our network. So we had to look at a way of securing it. The biggest issue is we had to anticipate the size of the device. Our district is what we consider a hyper growth district. We grew from 6,000 to almost 11,000 today. So we had to make a very educated guess on the size of our network. As an executive director, people don't realize that I am not in the trenches, right? My job basically is to give advice to our administration and to secure the device in our student and staff. One of our vendors, GTS, reached out and said, hey, we have a very good product that is industry used. I was like, okay, let's look at it. And they introduced Artemis. The Artemis product that we deployed was the cybersecurity and asset management tool that provided us with a snapshot of our infrastructure. It also tells us device, the OS, and it gives a cybersecurity alert on some triggers that may affect our network operability. We were able to detect devices that were rogue on our network and were able to proactively prevent future attacks that we presume that could have been detrimental to our network. Once we designed Artemis, it was brought in as a proof of concept, and the team at Artemis was so quick at adding it to our network. Since we've deployed the Artemis solution, we have been able to decrease our troubleshooting time by more than 50%. Since we have Artemis, we can literally find in five minutes where a device is, what applications he's using, and when he got off the network. Some of the benefits we have experienced since we deployed this solution. The biggest one is data, 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 data. We are a data-driven school district. Every single piece of equipment that I bring to my superintendent or to my school board to purchase has to be supported by data. The data that's provided from Artemis is immeasurable. Four is a lot of educational guests, but here we have a device that provides the data in real time. So for ease of use and agentless, it's invaluable. One thing I would tell other school districts, if you're looking for a security appliance to give you beneficial data, to be able to cut costs, to save a lot of time in troubleshooting, I would say go with Armis. It has helped us tremendously, and I have a lot of pressure off of my chest knowing that Armis is my eyes on my network. Okay, up next in the Lightning Talk session is Brian Galligan, Manager of Security and Operations at Brookfield Properties. Brian, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, John. So unified visibility across extended asset surface area is key these days. You can't secure what you can't see. So tell me more about how you were able to centralize your view of network assets with Armis and what impact that had on your business. Yeah, that's that's been a really key component of ours where we we've, uh, actually own multiple companies uh, with and, and are always acquiring companies um, at, from time to time. So um, it, it's always a question, what is actually out there um, and what do we need to be worried about? So from an, an inventory perspective, uh, it's definitely something that we've been looking into. Armis was a, a great partner in being able to get us the visibility into a lot of the IoT that we have out in the environment. Um, and then also trying to find what we have and what's actually installed on those devices, what's running, who's talking to who. Um, so that's definitely been a key component uh, with our partnership with Armis. You know, we interviewed a lot of practitioners and companies and one of the things we found is vulnerability management programs, there's a lot of gaps. You know, vulnerability management comes across, most sometimes for just IT devices, but not all assets. How has Armis vulnerability management made things better for your business and what can you see now that you couldn't see before? 
Yeah, again, because we we own multiple companies and they actually use different tools for vulnerability management, it's been a challenge to be able to cap, um, compare apples to apples um, on when we have vulnerability, when we have risk out there, how do you put a single number to it? How do you prioritize um, different initiatives across those sectors? And being able to use Armis and have that one score, have that one visibility, and also that one platform that you can query across all of those different companies has been huge because we just haven't had the ability to say, are we vulnerable to X, Y, and Z across the board um, uh, in, in these different companies. You know, it's interesting when you have a lot of different assets and companies, as you mentioned, um, it kind of increases the complexity. And yeah, we love the enterprise. You solve complexity by more complexity, but that's not the playbook anymore. We want simplicity. We want to have a better solution. So when you take into account the criticality of these businesses you're integrating in in real time, and the assets within those business operations, you got to keep focused on the right solutions. What has Armis done for you that's been correct and right for you guys? Yeah, so being able to, to see the different, uh, like be able to actually drill down into the nitty gritty on what, what devices are connecting to, to what, um, being able to enforce policies that way, I think has been a huge win that we've been able to see from Armis. Um, it's one of those things where we were able to see north-south traffic, um, no problem with our, our typical SIM tools, firewall tools, different logging sources, but we haven't been able to see anything east-west. And that's where we're going to be most vulnerable. That's where we've been um, actually uh, found, uh, we, we found some gaps in our coverage from a pen test perspective where we've found that it, we're, we don't have that visibility. Armis has allowed us to get into that communication to better fine tune the rules that we have across devices, across um, across sectors, across you know the data center to properties, properties to the data center, and then also to the cloud. Yeah, visibility into the assets is huge. Um, but as you, you're in operations, you got to operationalize these tools. I mean, some people sound like they got a great sales pitch and all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, I got to reconfigure my entire operations. At the end of the day, you want to have an easy to use, but effective capability so you're not taxed either personnel or operations. How easy has it been with Armist to implement uh, from an ease of use, simplicity, plug and play? In other words, how quickly did you get to the time to value? You can share your thoughts. This, this honestly is the biggest value that we've seen in Armis. I think a, a big kudos goes to the professional services group um, for getting us stood up, being able to explain the tool, be able to dig into it, and then get us to that time to value. Um, honestly, we've only scratched the surface on what Armis can give us, which is great because they've given us so much already. So definitely taking, taking that model of let's crawl, walk, run with what we're able to do, but the professional services team has given us so much uh, assistance in getting from one collector to now many collectors. And we're, we're in that deployment phase where um, we're able to gather more data and, and find those anomalies that are out there. Um, I, again, big props to the, the uh, professional services team. Yeah, you know, one of the, we had, a, had an old expression when, you know, when the whole democratization happened on the web, here comes all the people, you know, social media and whatnot. Now with I, IOT, here comes all the devices, here comes all the yeah. things. More things are being attached to the network. So Armis has this global asset knowledge base that crowdsources the asset intelligence. How has that been a game changer for you? And were you shocked when you discovered how many assets they were able to discover and what impact did that have for you? We, we have a large Wi-Fi footprint for guests, vendors, uh, contractors that are working on site, along with our corporate side, which, which has a lot of devices on it as well. And being able to see what devices are using what services on there and then be able to fingerprint them easily has been huge. I would say one, one of the best stories that I can tell is actually with a, a pen test that we ran recently, we were able to, to determine what the pen test device was um, and, and how it was acting anomalous and then fingerprint that device within five minutes, opposed to getting on the phone with probably four or five different groups to figure out what is this device? It's not one of our normal devices. It's not one of our uh, normal builds or anything. We were able to find that device within probably three to five minutes with, with Armis and, and the fingerprinting capability. Yeah, nothing, nothing's going to get by you with these port scans or any kind of <laughs> activity, so to speak, jumping on the Wi-Fi, great stuff. Anything else you'd like to share about Armis while I got you here? Yeah, I, I would say that uh, something recently we actually have an open position on our team currently, and one of the one of the most exciting things is being able to share our journey that we've had with Armis over the last year, year and a half, 
and their eyes light up when they hear the capabilities of what Armas can do, what Armas can offer. And you see a little bit of jealousy of, you know, hey, I really wish my current organization had that. And it's it's one of those selling tools that you're able to give um, to security engineers, security analysts saying, here's what you're going to have on the team to be able to do your job right. So that you don't have to worry about necessarily the, the normal mundane things. You get to actually go do the cool hunting stuff, which Armas allows you to do. Well, Brian, thanks for the time here on this lightning talk. Appreciate your insight. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Managed Risk Across Your Extended Attack Service Area with Armas Asset Intelligence Platform. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're here with the CISO Perspective, Alex Shuckman, who is the CISO of Colgate, Colgate Palmolive Company. Alex, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. You know, unified visibility across the enterprise surface area is about knowing what you got to protect. You can't protect what you can't see. Tell me more about how you guys are able to centralize your view with network assets with Armas. Yeah, I think the, the most important part of any security program is really visibility. And, and that's one of kind of the building blocks when you're building a security program. You need to understand what's in your environment, what's what you can control, what is being introduced new into the environment. And that's really what any solution that gives you full visibility to your infrastructure, to your environment, to all the assets that are there, that, that's really one of your bread and butter pieces to your security program. What's been the impact on your business? You know, I, I think from, from an IT point of view, running the security program, you know, our key thing is really enabling the business to do their job better. So if we can give them visibility into all the assets that are available in their individual environments, that, and we're doing that in an automated fashion with no manual collection, you know, that's an, yet another thing that they don't have to worry about. And then we're delivering because really IT is an enabler for the business. And then they can focus really on what their job is, which is to, to deliver product. Yeah, and a lot of changes in their network. You got infrastructure, you got IOT devices, OT devices. So vulnerability management becomes more important. It's been around for a while, um, but it's not just IT devices anymore, they're gaps and vulnerability across the OT network. What can you tell us about Colgate's use of Armis's vulnerability management? Um, what can you what can you see now? What you couldn't you see before? Can you share uh, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I think what's really interesting about the the kind of manufacturing environments today is if you look back a number of years, most of the manufacturing equipment was really disconnected from the internet. It was really running in silos. So it was very easy to protect equipment that, that isn't internet connected. You could put a firewall, you could segment it off, and it was, it was really on an island on its own. Nowadays, you have a lot of IoT devices, you have a lot of internet connected devices, sensors providing information to multiple different suppliers or vendor solutions. And you have to really then open up your ecosystem more, which of course means you have to change your security posture and you really have to embrace if there's a vulnerability with one of those suppliers, then how do you mitigate the risk associated to that vulnerability? Armist really helps us get a lot of information so that we can then make a decision with our business teams. That whole operational aspect of criticality is huge. How, on the assets, knowing what's what's key. How has that changed your the the security workload for you guys? Yeah, for us, I mean, it, it's all about being efficient. If we can have the the visibility of, across our manufacturing environments, then then my team can easily consume that information. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to digest the information, trying to process it, trying to prioritize it. That, that's, that really hurts our efficiency as, as a team or as a function. What we really like is being able to use technology to help us do that work. We're, we're not an IT shop, we're a, a manufacturing shop, but we're a very technical 
shop so that we like to drive everything through automation and not be a bottleneck for any of the, the actions that take place. You know, the old expression, is the juice worth the squeeze? It comes up a lot when people are buying tools around vulnerability management and all this stuff. So SaaS solution is key with no agents to deploy. They have that. Um, talk about how you operationalize Armis in your environment. How quickly did it act, achieve time to value? Take us through that, that consumption of the product and, and, and what was the experience like? Yeah, I'll definitely say a, in the security ecosystem, that, that's one of the, the biggest promises you hear uh, across the industry. And it, when, when we started with Armis, we started with a very small deployment and we wanted to make sure if, if it was really worth the lift, to your point. Uh, we implemented the, the first set of plants very quickly, actually even quicker than we had uh, put in our project plan, which is, is not typical for implementing complex security solutions. And then we were so successful with that, we expanded to cover more of our manufacturing plants and we were able to get really true visibility across our entire manufacturing organization in the first year with the ability to also say that we extended that, that information, that visibility to our manufacturing organization, and they could also consume it just as easily as we could. That's awesome. How many assets did you guys discover? Just curious on the numbers. Oh, that, that's the really interesting part. Um, you know, before we started this project, uh, we would have had to do a, a manual audit of, of our plants, which is typical in, in our industry. Um, you know, when, when we started this project and, and we put in estimates, we really, really didn't have a great handle on what we were going to find. And what's really nice about the Armis solution is it, it's truly giving you full visibility. So you're actually seeing besides the servers and the PLCs and all the equipment that you're familiar with, you're also connecting it to your wireless access points, you're connecting it to see any of those IoT devices as well. And then you're really getting full visibility through all the integrations that they offer. You're amazed how many devices you're actually seeing across your entire ecosystem. It's like Google Maps for your infrastructure. You got a little street view, you want to look at it, you get the you know, fake tree in there, whatever. Uh, but it gives you the picture. That's key. Correct, and with a nice visualization and an easy search engine, similar to your your Google analogy, you know everything is 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 really at your fingertips. If you want to find something, you just go to the search bar, click a couple uh, entries, and and boom, you get your your list of the associated devices or the the associated locations devices. Well, Alfred, I appreciate your time. I know you're super busy as CISO, a lot of your plate. Thanks for coming on and sharing, appreciate it. No problem, John. Thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Manager Risk Across the Extended Attack Surface with Armis. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got the demo god here, Brian Inman, sales engineer at Armis. Brian, thanks for coming on. We're looking forward to the demo. How are you doing? I'm doing well, John, thanks for having me. You know, we heard from Nadir, you know, describing Armis's platform, a lot of intelligence. It's like a search engine meets data at scale, uh, intelligent platform around laying out the asset map, if you will, the new vulnerability module, among other things that really solves uh, CISO's problems. Um, a lot of great customer testimonials. Um, and we, we got the demo here that you're going to give us. What's the demo about? What are we, we going to see? Well, John, thanks. Uh, it's a great question. And uh, truthfully, I think as Nadir has pointed out, what Armis as a baseline is giving you is, is great visibility into every asset on your, uh, that's communicating within your, within your environment. And from there, what we've done is we've layered on known vulnerabilities associated with not just the device, but also what else is on the device? What's, is there uh, certain applications running on that device, uh, the versions of those applications, and what are the vulnerabilities known with that? So, 
that's really gives you great visibility in, in terms of the devices that, that folks aren't uh, necessarily have visibility into now. Uh, unmanaged devices, um, IoT devices, OT and critical infrastructure, medical devices, things that you're not necessarily able to actively scan or put an agent on. So not only is Armis telling you about these devices, but we're also lay layering on those vulnerabilities all passively and in real time. A lot of great feedback we've heard. I've talked to you, some of your customers. The agentless is a huge deal. The discovery is awesome. You can see everything uh, and, and just getting real time information. It's really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to the demo for our guests. Take us on that tour. Let's go with the demo for the guests today. All right, sounds good. So what we're looking at here is uh, within the Armis console is just a clean representation of the passive uh, uh, reporting of what Armis has discovered. So we see a lot of different types of devices, you know, from your virtual machines and personal computers, things that are relatively easy to manage, but working our way down, you're able to see a lot of, uh, different, uh, of the, uh, different types of devices that are not necessarily easy to, to get visibility into, things like your up systems, um, uh, IP cameras, dash cams, et cetera, lighting systems. And in today's day and age where everything is moving to the, that smart feature, you know, it's, it's great to have that visibility into you know, what's communicating on my network and getting that, uh, being able to layer on the risk factors associated with it, as well as the vulnerabilities. So let's pivot over to our vulnerabilities tab and talk about the, the AVM portion, the asset vulnerability management. So what we're looking at is the dashboard where we're reporting a, a, another clean representation with customizable dashlets that gives you um, uh, visuals and reporting and things like new vulnerabilities as they come in. Um, you know, what are the most critical vulnerabilities that are the, the newest uh, as they roll in? The vulnerabilities by type. We have hardware, we have application, we have operating systems. Uh, as we scroll down, we can see things uh, uh, to break it down by vulnerabilities by the operating system, Windows, Linux, et cetera. Uh, we can take, you know, create dashes that show you views of the, the number of, of devices that are impacted by these CVEs. Uh, and scrolling down, we can see, you know, what, how long have these vulnerabilities been sitting within my environment? So how, what are the oldest vulnerabilities we have here? And then also, of course, vulnerabilities by application. So things like Google Chrome, Microsoft Office. So uh, we're able to give a, a good representation of the amount of vulnerabilities as they're associated to the hardware uh, and applications as well. So we're going to dig in and take a, a deeper look at one of these vulnerabilities here. So I'm, I'm excited to talk uh, today about uh, of where Armis ABM is, but also where it's going as well. So we're not just reporting on things like the CVSS score uh, from, from NIST NVD. We're also able to report on things like the exploitability of that, right? How, how actively is this, uh, this CVE being exploited in the wild, right? We're reporting uh, EPSS scores, for example. We're able to take uh, open source information as well as a lot of our partnerships that we have uh, with other vendors that are giving us a lot of great value of known vulnerabilities associated with the uh, applications and with uh, hardware, et cetera. But we're, where we're going with this is we're uh, in very near future releases, we're going to be able to, to take sort of an algorithm approach of what are the most critical CVSSs that we see, how exploitable are those, uh, what are th common threat actors doing with these, these uh, CVEs? Have they weaponized these CVEs? Are they actively using those weaponized uh, uh, tools to exploit these within uh, within other folks' um, uh, and environments and who's reporting on these. So we're going to take all of these and then really add that Armis flavor of we already know what that device is and we can explain and, and so can the users of it, the business criticality of that device, right? So we're able to pivot over to the matches as we see the CVEs. We're able to very cleanly view what, are, what exactly are the devices that the CVE resides on, right? And as you can see, we're giving you more than just an IP address or more, you know, a lot more context and we're able to click in and dive into what exactly are these devices and, how, and more importantly, how critical are these devices to, to my, my environment? If one of these devices were to go down, if it were to be a server, if, you know, whatever it may be, uh, I would want to focus on those particular devices and ensuring that that CVE, uh, especially if it's an exploitable CVE, uh, were to be addressed or, or early, earlier than, than say the others and really be able to manage and prioritize these. Another great feature about it is, you know, for example, we're looking at uh, a, a particular CVE in terms of uh, its, its patch and build number from Windows 10. So the auto resolve feature that we have, uh, for example, we've passively detected what this particular uh, uh, personal computer is running, Windows 10 and the build and revision numbers on it. And then once Armis passively discovers 
an update to that firmware and patch level, we can automatically resolve that, uh, giving you a, a, a confidence that that has been addressed from that particular um, uh, device. We're also able to customize and look through and potentially select a few of these, say, you know, these particular devices reside on your guest network or an employee Wi-Fi network where we don't necessarily, I don't want to say care, but we don't necessarily uh, uh, value that as much as something, in, in, you know, internally that has, holds significantly more uh, business criticality. So we can select some of these and potentially ignore or resolve uh, for uh, determining reasons, as you see here, and be able to really truly manage and prioritize these, these CVEs. As I scroll up, I can pivot over to the remediation tab and open up each one of these. So what this is doing is essentially Armis has, you know, through our knowledge base, been able to uh, work with the vendors and, and pull down the patches associated with these. And within the remediation portion, we're able to view, uh, for example, if we were to pull down the patch from this particular vendor we, and apply it uh, to these uh, 60 devices that you see here, right now we're able to, to view, you know, which patches are gonna give me the most impact as I prioritize these and take care of these affected devices. And lastly, uh, as I uh, pivot back over, uh, again, where we're at now is we're able to uh, allow the, the users to customize the organizational priority of this particular CVE to where in terms of, you know, NIST has, has given us a, a high CVSS score, but maybe for whatever reasons it may be, maybe uh, the CVE uh, in terms of this particular uh, logical segment of my network. I'm going to give it a low priority uh, for whatever the use case may be. We have compensating controls set in place that, uh, that render this CVE um, um, not impactful to this particular segment of my environment. So we're able to add that organizational priority to that CVE. And where we're going, as you can see that, that popped up here, but where we're going is we're going to start to be able to apply the, uh, the organizational priority in terms of the actual device level, right? So what we'll see is we'll see a, a column added to here to where we'll see the, uh, the business impact of that device based on the importance of that particular segment of your environment or the device type, uh, be it you know critical uh, networking device or maybe a, um, a critical uh, infrastructure device, PLCs, controllers, et cetera, uh, but really giving you that passive reporting on the CVEs in terms of what the device is uh, within your network. And then finally, we do integrate with your vulnerability, uh, vulnerability management uh, and scanners as well. So if you have a scanner actively scanning these, but potentially uh, they're missing segments of your net network or they're not able to actively scan certain devices on your network, that's the power of Armis being able to come back in and give you that visibility of not only what those devices are to, for visibility into them, but also what vulnerabilities are associated with those passive devices that aren't being scanned by your network today. So with that, that's that concludes my demo. So I'll kick it back over to you, John. Awesome, great, uh, great uh, walk through there. T take me through what you think the most important part of that. Is it the discovery piece? Is it the interaction? What's your favorite? Honestly, I think my favorite part about that is, you know, in terms of being able to have the visibility into the devices that a lot of folks don't see currently. So those IoT devices, those OT devices, things that you're not able to, to run a scan on or put an agent on, Armist is not only giving you visibility into them, but also layering in, as I said before, those vulnerabilities on top of that. That's just visibility that a lot of folks today don't have. So Armist does a great job of giving you visibility and vulnerabilities and risks associated with those devices. So I have to ask you, when you give this demo to customers and prospects, what's the reaction? Um, falling out of their chair moment? Are they more skeptical? Um, it's almost too good to be true. And end-to-end -end vulnerability management is uh, a tough nut to crack in terms of solution. Honestly, uh, a lot of clients that we've had, you know, especially within the OT and the medical side, they're they're blown away because at the end of the day, when we can give them that visibility, as I've said, you know, hey, I, I didn't even know that those devices resided in that that portion. But not only are we showing them what they are and where they are and enrichment on risk factors, et cetera, but then we show them, hey, there's a known, you know, we've worked with that vendor, uh, whatever it may be, and you know, Rockwell, et cetera, and we know that there's vulnerabilities associated with those devices. So they just seem to be blown away by the fact that we can show them so much uh, about those devices uh, from behind one single console. You know, it reminds me of the old days, I'm going to date myself here. Remember the old Google Maps mashup days? Um, this is, customers talk about this as the Google Maps for their assets. And uh, uh, when you have the Google Maps and you have the Ubers out there, you can look at the trails. You can look at what's happening inside the, inside the enterprise. So there's got to be a lot of interest in once you get the assets 
what's going on on, on those on, in those on those networks or those roads, if you will, because you got packet movement, you got things happening, you got upgrades, you got changing devices. It's an always-on kind of living thing. Absolutely, yeah. It's what's on my network, and more importantly, at times, what's on those devices, right? Are the, what are the risks associated with the the applications running on those? How are those devices communicating? And then as we've seen here, what are the vulnerabilities associated with those and how can I take action with them? All right, real quick, put a plug in for where I can find the demo. Is it online, is it on YouTube, on the website? Where does someone see this demo? Yeah, uh, the Armist website has a lot of demo content loaded. Uh, get you in touch with folks like my, engineers like myself to, to provide demos um, whenever, whenever needed. All right, Brian, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate sales engineer Armist, Brian Inman, giving the Demo God award out to him. Good job, thanks for the demo. Thanks, thanks for having me. Okay, you know, in a moment, we're going to have um, my closing thoughts on this event and really the impact to the business operations side in a moment. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching. So the biggest problem with remediating vulnerabilities is prioritization of resources. Every team has too few people, every team has too many vulnerabilities. What you need is the ability to smartly prioritize what your team needs to spend their time remediating. And Asset intelligence, you know, asset context is a huge part of that. You might have vulnerabilities that allow someone from the outside to come in and, and remotely control a machine. You know, that, would, that would get a critical rating. Uh, other vulnerabilities allow someone to mess with data on the machine. It, it really depends, but ultimately it's, it's not just about CVEs. It's paying attention to the conditions which allow CVEs to be exploited. You want to understand what other assets that asset communicates with. So there are layers of intelligence that you can get about assets. The more that you have on each asset, the better. Uh, the better for security and, and also the better for enhancing workflows that today are pretty manual without having a, a good source for up-to-date, you know, accurate asset intelligence. Having the asset intelligence, having the context around that device helps your team understand what they need to prioritize uh, remediation of first. Hi everyone, welcome to the closing statement. Uh, this program produced by theCUBE is called Managing Your Risk Across the Extended Attack Surface with Armis Asset Intelligence Platform. You heard a lot about Armis Vulnerability Management from the CTO and the co-founder. They have big time customers, testimonials, offering them up and a big demo to show you how easy their agentless program works and how easy it is to get time to value. It uh, looks like they got a lot of traction uh, with a lot of big time customers, which is great for the industry to keep pushing ahead with these new security capabilities. This is a big problem that they solve. Having visibility into the entire asset base, kind of on this discovery basis, brings a Google Maps vibe to lay out all the assets and then understand the context of those. This is kind of given new kind of visibilities to take better action, to understand what to protect and when to protect it. Critical assets versus non-critical, which alerts to look at, what not to. All the data is there on a dashboard. So this should help security professionals and operations teams be faster, smarter, more efficient, and enable their developers to develop the best solutions. This is a win for security owners and managers and operators and developers. And you got a great company like Armis bringing a great solution with this new platform. Let's see how it does. They got a bold customer base and a strong management team and great technology. This is theCUBE special program, John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. If you want a deeper dive into the subject, go check out their website, armis.com slash AVM. You just get a solution brief and all their material, and there's plenty of people to talk to. Thanks for watching.